let's dive into what we're really here to talk about today, and that is behind the scenes of the five day challenge. I would love to know in the chat if you um, have signed up, if you're a book club member and already have access, or if you are a um, potential business owner who, or a business owner or an artist who's thinking maybe they would like to run the five day challenge themselves. You never know. Um, so yeah, let me know in the chat and um, hold off on your questions and um, ask them towards the end and I'd be happy to answer them for you. Uh, but if you can't wait, pop them in the chat and um, we'll get to them as soon as we can. I want to introduce you to Amber, who is joining me today. She is actually behind the scenes. You can't see her, but I'm going to temporarily bring her on the screen so you can see her. She can say hi to you. Amber is our marketing manager. Hold on, let me. Oh, no, <laughs> there she is. <laughs> She's used to me clicking buttons randomly. <laughs> yes, it's all good. <laughs> Where, um, whereabouts are you in the country, Amber? I'm in uh, Pennsylvania, Lebanon, Lancaster County area. Nice. And yeah. I am, your studio's looking pretty nice. Thank you. My mom helped me this weekend. There we go. It looks great. Organize everything. It does. I'm really happy with it. <laughs> oh, it's good. It just there's something about reorganizing your space and it feels so good. Yes, very much. We have a crafting space and we have the office space and nice. have a place to work and turn around and craft as well. <laughs> oh, that's it. And we want a good split between making and working, please. Absolutely. So. <laughs> yes. And just to let you know, folks, that when Amber joined us, which uh, I, I, it's probably, it's probably going to be a year soon. I can't even believe it. Um, <laughs> Amber's previous thing was wire work, but you had to sort of really slow that down because of your hands. Um, but we've, we've pulled her into how many books. <laughs> I love it. And it's the best thing ever. It's so much fun. We have a ton of fun. <laughs> Yes. Well, we have a, yeah, we do have heaps of fun. But yeah, I was, yeah, we were like, oh, no, no, you know, Amber, you don't, you know, Amber doesn't make books. That's fine. That's great. But yeah, within a few months, Amber's like, okay, fine, I'll make a book. I'm making books. I'm making books. I can't wait for next week. I'm so excited. I have all my stuff ready. You do? You've I got do. everything ready? I do. Good. Nice. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> all right. Thank you, ma'am. Um, Amber will be in the chat. She will be looking out for your questions and she'll sort of hold on to them until we get to the Q&A section. And um, if there are any links that we need to drop in, Amber will be able to do that too. Um, but we have put several links underneath already that you that you may need for this. So um, thank you, Amber. I shall see you shortly. Okay. Thanks, Ali. Bye. Bye. All right, my friends, the five day challenge. What is a five-day challenge, you uh, may ask. And a five-day challenge, well, I can tell you what, for us, what a creative, what a five-day challenge is, and sort of within the creative community. Um, challenges are under the guidance of a teacher during a certain period of time, you um, generally complete a project or you go through a process. So you can have a five-day writing challenge where each day you have... Um, Writing prompts could be a seven, 10 day challenge, whatever the length is. And you get, say, writing prompts every day. And at the end of it, you'll have, you know, maybe a short story. Um, maybe you would have a painting if it was like a painting challenge. Day one, you just sew your canvas. Day two, whatever people do who paint, I don't even know. A um, friend of mine, used to, Margie, used to do a, an art journal challenge. So on day one, you'd prep the pages. On day two, you'd put on a background. Day three, perhaps you'd add some stenciling. So it's a creative challenge is to do step by step to sort of get to an end product, generally speaking. So that is what we do. We do a Monday to Friday, five days. And then, you know, Monday, you do um, part of the book. The next day, you do the next part of the book. So say on Monday, you prepare your pages. On Tuesday, you cut out your covers. On Wednesday, maybe you glue the cover. Thursday we might sew, Friday we might do a closure. So it's like step by step by step. So, and the reason, um, so, and why do we do this? And why do we charge for it? Because a lot of times you can take a challenge for free. Um, and the reason we, um, we do charge either 10 or $15 for our challenges. And the reason being, it just um, gives people, it kind of makes you feel more committed. I don't know about you, I sign up for a lot of stuff online and then I wind up never doing it. So just by paying a small fee, it just helps to increase 
the participant's commitment level to actually doing it. You know what I mean? Because sometimes we just kind of need that little push, um, a little bit of accountability. It's just psychological. Gosh, if I paid for this, I really should do it. If I haven't paid for it, eh, who cares? So um, that is why we pay for it. I've seen other great five-day challenges. Um, a friend of mine is thinking about doing one for resin. So Dale, she does, uh, she teaches people how to make, uh, how to do um, a couple of things with, you know, resin, like cutting boards and things. So, you know, each day you'll learn like another step in the process for making a cutting board, for example, how to mix the resin, how to repair it, how to pour it, how to cure it. Like there's also, it's a really versatile way um, to introduce people to your art or your craft or whatever your process is. Um, how, let me just uh, pop something on screen so that you don't get just sick of looking at me. Um, how does it work? How does a five day challenge work? Um, everyone does theirs a little bit differently. Um, I'll tell you how ours works and how I've seen some other people do it. And keep in mind that our five day challenge process has evolved. It's, we've done nine now, I think, or it could be 10. I'm not even really sure. I should probably count. The very first one looks very different to how this one looks because we did one, we made mistakes like everyone does and we learned from them and some things worked. So we brought those forward, some things didn't work so we left them behind and some things worked, ha, huh, so, so, so we improved them. And then each time we try to get a little bit better or we'll, you know, sometimes we'll experiment and add something in, maybe it work, maybe it doesn't. So then we leave it behind if it didn't work or we add it in. So just keep in mind that this, um, we've done this many times. And when I say we, it started out as just me. And then the second time there were two of us, Mickey and I, and then I think it was Mickey and I for quite a few. And then we added in another team member, another team member, another team member. And now we have a team of people, I think five or four who work on the challenge. So, um, Keep in mind that this is an evolution. Um, the way our challenge works is that you receive a, each day, the five days of the challenge, you receive a pre-recorded video or videos. Sometimes it's two or three short videos. I try to keep them short. You receive pre-recorded videos. Um, and then we meet on Zoom during the day live to talk about it, to answer questions, to be in community, to share ideas. We now meet on Zoom twice a day. Previously, we only met once a day, but we do it twice now to cover different time zones. We have a Facebook group, which runs, uh, which is set up a month ahead and then runs for like six months at least afterwards. So people can be in community even more. Um, and then on the Sunday, so we take Saturday off and on the Sunday, we have a wrap up party. Um, so it's, you know, seven days essentially with Saturday off. Um, and we, um, we don't provide materials. So we provide a supply list ahead of time. We've experimented with doing kits with a partner. So Andrea Shevalu from A Work of Heart. Um, we've, for some challenges we do, for some challenges we don't. This one we're not, but that's not to say we won't for other challenges. So we've teamed up with a supplier to provide kits. Um, for those who don't have any supplies. Um, other, and, and we offer lifetime access to the challenge videos, but you will see other models out there. Some people, and probably for a really good idea, they only offer access for say six weeks, six months, perfectly fine. I mean, whatever, you know, whatever works. For us, we just found, sorry, it's hand cream time. For us, we have just found that offering lifetime access works for our customers um, a lot better. Um, but there are definitely pros and cons to that. You'll see many challenges. So if you're thinking about doing the challenge, many people do them live on Zoom. Lots, in fact, most will do it. So say you meet every day at 10 o'clock a.m. Eastern time on Zoom and the actual teaching will take place right there on Zoom. And that is a very popular model and it's great. Some people just do the um, challenge via email. So particularly writing prompts, there's perhaps no need to get together in community or even have a video. It's just written. A friend of mine, um, Sandra is doing a haiku challenge in the summer, 100 days of haiku. Um, her website is poetryseeds.com. And um, 
again, that she won't be delivering a video, I don't think. Um, she'll be just de delivering text once a week for this challenge. So that's, you know, that's basically how it works for us. Um, and, you know, we do the things that you would expect, like daily emails with the lesson, reminder emails, things like that when people sign up. Um, how do we decide on the project that we're going to do? That's a question I get asked a lot. How do we decide on the project? And um, lots goes into it. It isn't just random, as you can imagine. Um, I try to choose project or projects because this time we're doing uh, three. We're doing these three little books. In the past, we generally do one book. A couple challenges ago, we did five simple accordion books. The way we choose the projects is um, I try to think of a book structure where people will have most of the things available to them. So I'm, I'm guessing most of the people who take our challenge are already crafters. They're not brand new people. Sometimes they're brand new people, but rarely they're often crafters. And I know from experience and because I'm the same way, I have already have a lot of tools and supplies in my spare bedroom, studio, kitchen table whatever. Um, so I try to choose projects which don't have a lot of specialized tools. I don't use a lot of specialized tools anyway. And if it is using a particular tool, what we try to do is offer lots of alternative tools that you could use. So, you know, it says bone folder, but we say, but you can also use a credit card. And then um, we try to use materials that are easily accessible, like drawing paper, which is available at um, an art supply store. This time we're doing a leather cover, but we've given lots of alternatives and we're encouraging people to um, go to a thrift store to get like, you know, used leather that way. So we've, we are actually quite intentional about how we choose our projects for this challenge because it's meant as an entry point to the world of handmade books to see if, you know, you even like it. So why go buy a lot of stuff and a lot of tools and a lot of supplies while we all love to do that? Like, I really, like, my Amazon cart is full of cyanotype materials from the weekend. Just saying. I'm not even going to tell you how much they cost. Um, I haven't hit buy yet. Um, but, you know, we, we don't want to be in a position of forcing people to buy a lot of things if this is not going to be a hobby for them. So that is how we decide the project. We also choose the project so that it, it's easy to be broken down into steps because, obviously, we're doing it over five days. You don't want a project where... Um, Everything needs to be done on day one and then day two, three, four and five. There's not much to do like that really wouldn't be much of a challenge. So it needs to be something that could be broken down into steps when you will choose. If you decide you're going to run a challenge, you'd break it down, you know, choose a project to break down. We also choose a project that's not too easy, which is kind of weird, right? You would think that for. a Well, maybe you wouldn't think, but you, would, you know, you might think that we want to choose something easy so that people have success, which then might want to make them come and join our book club, which is why we do it. I'll explain in a minute. But actually, I intentionally choose something that is a bit more difficult, that is a bit of a challenge. Because, well, one of the reasons being that um, I don't, I think that making books doesn't have to be difficult. And I'm able to I'm able to take quite a complicated book structure and make it simple. And I truly believe everyone can learn to make a book. And so we actually intentionally choose something that is a bit of a stretch for a lot of people because I want to show them like, really, you can do this. You may think at the beginning you can't, but you really can do this. And then it's a much better stepping stone if they decide to come join our community in the book club. The stepping stone from that sort of slightly challenging project to the book club is um, an easier transition. Then if we did say, um, we're going to take five days to make a pamphlet stitch book or one accordion book, and then they come and join our book club and there's um, other books like this, they'll be like, oh, this isn't for me because this is too difficult. So anyhow, maybe that was too much detail. I don't know. But um, why do we do this? I've probably answered that question already. Um, and that is to, um, ultimately, we do it because we would like people to come join us in the Handmade Book Club. But 
I want the right people to come join us. Like we're, I hate to say this, but we're, no, I don't hate to say this. I'm proud to say this. We're a pretty special community of people. And we, um, we want to welcome in the kind of people who are going to really appreciate that community and really enjoy it and really get a lot out of it. What we don't want to do is just, you know, randomly just go out on the street and just pull in random strangers because um, we might get weird, you know, spammers from Russia or whatever. So we intentionally run this challenge to introduce ourselves, like to introduce me, to introduce my teaching style, to introduce the style of work that I like to make but also to introduce the community that we have built um, so that if it's your cup of tea, you're like, hell yes, I want to be in that community or hell yes, I like her work. But if it's not your cup of tea, you've lost 10 bucks or $15 and, you know, a few days and you've got a nice book. So it's like, it's like we're sort of auditioning each other. Like, you, you know, you see if you like us, we see if you're like a good fit and then we invite you to come into the community. Um, so it's just a nice step. The challenge is a nice stepping stone to the Handmade Book Club to just, you know, dip your toe in the water to see if you like us. Do you like the way we interact with one another? Maybe you don't. And that's OK. Like, not, I'm not for everyone. And then, you know, like each sort of teacher, each maker, each creator has, you know, resonates with their own kind of group of people. And um, I'm not for everyone. Um, and that's, 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 that's a good thing. Like we don't have to be everything to everyone in this world. I'm really comfortable with that now. I, I can't, can't say like, you know, 10 years ago I was, but right now it, like, I feel like it's okay to um, just, you know, not be for some people, but really be for some people. So that is why we run those five day challenges. And so if you're an artist um, who would like to run one of those, run a challenge, even if you only get a few people signed up and into your community, at least you'll know that they're the right kind of people and they're the ones who are going to vibe with you. Um, so it's just, it's, it's like a low barrier to entry for people to come into your world for like, you know, they just come over for afternoon tea and just sample what's on the table, sample your conversation, see how you make your tea. Cause if you make weak tea, probably don't want to be there, but, um, you know, just, I can see Anne for laughing. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, you're just, you're just coming for tea, and we're just going to sit, and we're going to have a chat, and I'm going to judge you on your tea. No, no. Um, rather than inviting you to spend a week at my house, which would be like joining the Handmade Book Club, or, you know, coming to live with me for a month. We're just going to have tea. So that's, if you're an artist and you're thinking about doing a challenge, that's sort of what you're doing. You're just inviting them over for a short amount of time to see if, if you if you vibe with these people and it, okay it may happen to be a group of a hundred or a thousand people who are taking this challenge but it's the same thing you're welcoming them into your home for a short period of time to see if they'd like to stick around so if they'd like to become a family member so um another question i get asked a lot is how do we promote the um challenge um i can tell you that um well last year all the previous years we've done three challenges per year the first one we did in 2020 I think we only did two although 2020 is an extremely long time ago we didn't do one in 20 um, did we even do one in 2019 I don't even know I can't even remember the dates like the last four years like for most of you are just like a blur we generally do between two and three per year but we're always thinking about no, we're not always thinking about the next one. It's not like we're not in the present serving our current customers. But, and that's actually why we only do them several times a year, because they do take so much effort and focus that um, I would rather do that for a short period of time than spend the rest of the year focusing on the Handmade Book Club, the, the community that we have. But we are thinking all year about um, outreach and building up our email list, you know, our newsletter list, um, throughout, so throughout the year, you know, we'll be offering free classes to people. And in fact, I've included a link to one below, which is like a free, uh, free, yeah, our latest sort of free class that you can take. You know, you you give your email address, and then you get sent to like a free class, which is kind of fun. Um, so throughout the whole twelve months, 
um, we are sort of, or well, have, you know, six months to the next one. We're always trying to build up our email list so that we have new people to invite to the challenge because you can't just keep inviting the same people. Someone's taken a challenge a few times and then they're like, you know, this really isn't for me. That's perfectly fine. But we want to keep kind of bringing new people in to our world and inviting them to take the challenge. So we, we build our email list throughout the year by offering free classes. Uh, you may remember in February, um, I offered a free class with Amy Maracle. So I joined together with another artist. Together, we did a free class together. So that was really fun. Um, and uh, what else do we do? I do come on YouTube and I do YouTube videos, M not every week, but as often as I possibly can. I'll do YouTube videos. Um, and then, so when it comes time, say, say we're a month out from the challenge, obviously we post on social media, a lot even. And we post on Facebook and Instagram and we do lots of different types of posts. So we don't just do a post of, here's what we're making for the five day challenge, please join us. We'll do reels, we'll do some videos, we'll do some testimonials. So, you know, what other people have thought about in the past. Um, we might do a video with me making the book. We might do a video of me talking. Oof, not my favorite. We might do, um, Amber might do a video of, um, she might make like a little reel of the books from the design team, because now we have a, um, we've built up from not having one to having like a group of book club members who are on a design team for us. So they get the project early and then they make samples for us to give people um, different ideas about what they could do, particularly for their covers. Because I, I have a distinct, well, I don't know if it's distinct. I have a particular style, but it's quite plain. But um, we choose like different people with different styles for the design team so that folks, you know, get a broader idea of what could be done with those books. So we'll, we'll promote that too. So on our social media. So we try to really mix up social media so that um, we sort of, some people like reels, some people don't. Some people would rather see, you know, pictures. Some people would rather see a talking head. I don't think so, but well, that's okay. Um, you know, they, different things appeal to different people. And then we've spent the whole year building up our email list. So we email them, we ask. And, you know, I think it's okay to ask. I think it's okay to say, hey, we have this coming up and we think it's really fun. And we really, we really do think it's really fun to do the challenge. So um, we invite people. And, you know, we don't invite people very often to um, spend 10 or $15 with us. So I think a couple times a year, it's kind of okay to say, you know, hey, why don't you come on over and try this? We think you'd really like it. So um, we do invite people often from our email list. And then we also do run some paid advertising too, which I understand is not in everyone's budget, but um, even if you can afford a little bit of advertising to um, boost what you're doing on social media, it really, really helps. So if you can just start out by doing an initial investment and then each year it'll be a, like a self-perpetuating thing that, you know, you'll get more people to join your challenge if you add a little bit of ad money and then you'll get more people to stay in your community so that then next time you'll get more people to sign up for your challenge so you can spend a little bit more on advertising and so it goes on. So if you can, it's, you know, it's a good thing to do. Um, if you can't, that's okay too. It's just, it's just a choice. Um, so that is how we promote it. And then the benefits and drawbacks, there certainly are drawbacks. Um, but let's start with the benefits. Um, it helps us to grow our community of people. Even if someone takes a challenge, but they don't sign up for the book club, that's perfectly fine. What we found is that people take multiple challenges often. They're just not ready for like a monthly commitment, particularly financially, which goodness knows that's perfectly fine. Not everyone is, um, but they really want to take all the challenges. So great. So it's definitely a way for us to grow our community. It's a great way for us to grow our email list um, because, you know, new people are coming in and, and then being part of our newsletter community. And then obviously the ultimate goal is if it's a good fit um, for that challenge taker to join the book club. 
um, and you know only if that feels right. So those are the benefits, you know, list growth, community growth, and then our paid membership growth is one of the benefits. The um, also I have to tell you, while it's a lot of work, so one of the drawbacks is it's a heck of a lot of work. The satisfaction that I get and I know the team gets from seeing all those books, like at the end of the week, like honestly, oh usually I'm in tears because I'm so tired, but also I'm kind of emotional at the end of the week because like just seeing um, seeing the books and, and hearing people's stories behind how the, you know, who the book is for, what materials they used and, and if they were like important or special to them or, you know, who this big, who you know who this book is for for someone really special in their life for a certain occasion or someone who thought they couldn't do it but could and feels like really good about themselves they're like I don't think I could do this but like I really did it like those stories and the satisfaction that and joy we get from seeing everyone do this is like the biggest you, you can't even imagine like I say, we're, we're just, whether, whether it's from fatigue or emotion, we wind up just usually in tears by the end of the week. Um, but I would say that is the biggest benefit is just knowing that, um, going back to my original point at the beginning, that, you know, creativity in our lives is important. And I'm not for everyone, but probably if you're watching this, it's, you know, an important part of who we are. And expressing that creativity is is huge. And when we can't, and when it's stuck, you don't feel good. So just seeing, you know, several thousand people <laughs> make books and feel really good and share them and encourage one another. And if someone doesn't finish, you know, someone else will say, hey, it doesn't matter. Don't worry. You'll get it finished. But look how far you've come. I'm telling you, don't get any better than that. Um, and then the drawbacks, you know, it's, it's a lot of work. Um, and sometimes um, you, if you are a business owner, you, you do need to be mindful excuse me, about planning for success. So sometimes, like we did, I did the first challenge, I think, I think it was in March 2020. Well, I didn't actually know a pandemic was coming. <laughs> Go figure. Um, so it was very successful, but I, I hadn't planned for that because well, I didn't know there was going to be a pandemic and everyone was home. So everyone... And lots of people wanted to take the challenge, but I hadn't planned for that. So that was pretty overwhelming in terms of like customer service, letting people into the Facebook group, you know, trying to do all of the things. So, you know, if you plan to sort of spend money on ads or you think you've just participated with another artist in a collaboration of some kind and you feel like you really might get a lot of people taking your challenge, you're just going to want to uh, reach out to a friend or a family member to get some help to handle that so that can be a drawback is that it's actually too successful which I know shouldn't be a drawback but you don't want to invite people to take a challenge or do something with you and then not be able to provide a good experience because that's almost counterproductive kind of so that would be a drawback and also without ad spend as well your results might not be as um, big but that's not to say you shouldn't do it because um just having a small group, say you've got 25 people taking a challenge with you, that'll be a tight knit, fun group to spend time with. And that whole level of connection will be completely different than if it was 2000. So um, that's not a drawback, that's a plus. So, you know, if you do decide to run one and you only, you get lower numbers than you would have hoped, that's not necessarily a drawback is kind of what I'm trying to say. So um, I'm just secure my own voice. Are there any questions from people who themselves would like to run a challenge? Are there any questions about the challenge we have coming up? If you have signed up for it and are interested, you know, have a question, I can answer that too. If Amber hasn't already answered it or someone else from the community may have already answered that question in the chat, um, I would be happy to answer them, but I just do need to take a drink first. Okay, Amber, you can put those on the screen there. Let me get rid of the banner. <laughs> thank you tammy and tammy says well you can read one thing she loves it's there's never any pressure you can do as much as little feel good about being part of the group that's really true i think that's one of the reasons we give lifetime access as well is because 
I don't know, it's nothing worse than feeling like a failure. I don't want to feel like a failure. Like this is meant to be fun and like boost your confidence, <laughs> not detract from it. So yes, Tammy, I agree. Um, you, this current challenge, I, it, where we're doing these three books, I suspect that um, many people only finish one. They may only finish the day one book. Okay, great. One more than you would have made. You'll learn a lot. And yeah, so good point, Tammy. Any other questions, Amber? No questions? Oh, come on, people. I also fell in love with doing the coffee chat. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Ms. Bila. Thank you. Yeah, the Coptic challenge was really fun. Let me show you. Um, this is the let me show you a couple of books that we have made. Um, this is the previous challenge. This was a Coptic challenge. And what we did was we took um, book board and we covered it with um, like uh, some kind of paper underneath and then a napkin. We actually made the paper, we did like a paper base and then we put um, like a, you know, the top layer of a napkin over the top and then we wrap, wrap that around the book cover. If you can see there's like music sheets under there. Um, not everyone did that. Some people did different covers. And then we learned the classic Coptic binding, which is something that lots of people want to learn. So, um, yeah, it was fun. And then we put little tabs in there too. So, um, yeah, that was a really fun one. We should probably do that one again. And then I think... I don't, I don't know when this one was, but this was um, a long stitch one that we did, which was really fun. It's a trash truck outside. That's great. Um, this was a really fun one that people did so many cool things on. It was super easy and it had like beads at the top. And um, that was a really, that was a great project. And then I, actually, this was another one too. I've, I've been walking down memory lane today. Um, this was the mixed media one we did with like a, signet these kind of big chunky signature wrappers inside i don't know if you can see them probably not here are the signature wrappers right here we did this kind of wrap around that was a really fun one too that was called the mixed media challenge so and these are available on our website if you want to go take a look at them um but yeah so no no other questions i literally thought there'd be a ton of questions nanda what technology have you found easiest to use Good. That's a great question, Nanda. What technology have I found easy to use? Um, Zoom. Zoom is easy to use. Um, for if you're talking about uh, filming videos, I film with a camera. It's right here. I film. Hold on. I'm trying to pull it. Oh, I'm stuck. I've got too much hand cream on. I film with a DS DSLR camera. No, a mirrorless camera over my desk. But if I didn't have that, I'd film with my phone. Um, and then I edit in iMovie. Simple, simple. iMovie is easy to use um, if you wanted to pre-record. So I find that technology is pretty straightforward to use. Um, so Zoom is easy to use. And that's why a lot of people just offer the challenge live. Personally, I like to do the pre-recorded because um, we're stitching. And I want people to be able to see close up. And sometimes on Zoom, the quality isn't that great. Do you know what I mean? Because of the internet connection. So it's a bit blurry. Like it might be blurry now because we're live. Um, so I found Zoom easy to work with. Um, what other technology do we use? I mean, we host within something called Kajabi, which is slightly different to Teachable. I know, well, I know a lot of people are on Teachable. A lot of people aren't happy with Teachable. Personally, I don't care for Teachable. We're on something called Kajabi, but it's the same kind of platform. But you don't necessarily need to be on a platform like that. If you've got a website through Squarespace or something, you could do it on, you know, put the videos like on Squarespace or on your website and just put it behind, you know, a password page or something. So um, the, te not, the technology can be a little bit intimidating, but just, you know, you would start off small and take it one step at a time. You wouldn't do all of the things all at once. You know what I mean? Just keep it super simple, I would say, with the technology. And I'm happy to answer. And if anyone's got questions, you can always shoot me an email. I'm always happy to answer them. Any other questions? No, we're good. I honestly thought there'd be like 100,000 questions because like I'm always, I want to know stuff like this. <laughs> uh, this is fun. Debbie says, I don't want to charge, but I go on vacation with two best friends and I always bring the supplies. I love that. That's really cute. Oh, that's, that's a great, that's a great idea. 
great idea. All right, you're very welcome, Nanda. Well, that was, well, I hope you found that useful. I hope you found that interesting. Um, if you do have any questions about how we run the challenges, why we run the challenges, the technology, the, um, I don't know, if you've got an idea for a challenge and you kind of want to just say, oh, what do you think? Would this be a good idea? Feel free to reach out because um, I love talking about this stuff. And um, I am looking forward to our five-day challenge next week. So um, we'll be making three books in five days. And um, the nice thing about this challenge is that, you know, on day one, on day one, we create our pages. Day two, we create our covers. And then on day three, it's like a heavy day. Wednesday's a heavy day because you sort of learn how to punch the holes and do the sewing for this binding. But then the subsequent days are very similar. You know what I mean? Like it's the same process. You use the template, you punch the holes, you do the sewing. Um, it's like by day five, you'll be like a pro because you're going to be like repeating things that you've already like learned on day three, if that makes sense. So that kind of repetition and muscle memory, um, I think will be great. So if you are able to keep up, that'd be wonderful. If you're not, it doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, by the end of it, I'm hoping that you'll feel pretty confident. And then I got to tell you, I'm pretty darn excited about the project I just did for June uh, in the book club. Oh, it's going to be so good. I'm going to show you how to um, give you like a checklist of how to design your own fabric book with your own decorative binding. So I cannot wait for that. I told you I came back with lots of ideas from taking a class. Okay, my friends, have a wonderful, wonderful week. I will see most of you on Monday for the challenge. Expect an email from us and um, expect, um, I'm hoping to see a few of you on Zoom. Debbie, look at you, it's your first challenge. Or oh, we're going we're gonna to get you hooked. Don't worry, we will get you hooked. Stephanie says she's got her supplies ready to go. Oh, are the book club videos recorded? Oh, yeah. All of the book club videos, everything's recorded. Unless I forget to, well, all of the book club videos that I do are pre-recorded, just like the challenge. And we do do live events on a Friday, which are on Zoom, but they're always recorded. Unless for some reason I forget, which no one ever lets me forget, everything's recorded. Because we're all in different places with different time zones and with different lives, and we all have things to do. All right, so I hope to see you, some of you, all of you on Zoom next week. We're on at 10 a.m. Eastern and 4 p.m. Eastern, slightly different times this year to try and hit some different time zones. Um, so it's going to be 4 p.m. this year, so I won't be in my pajamas like last year. Um, but uh, I'll think of something stupid to do to make you laugh at 4 p.m. because I'll be really loopy and tired. So, all right, my friends. And if you haven't signed up for the challenge yet, the link is down below. We would love to have you. All right. Take care, everyone, and have a wonderful weekend.